<laughs> Navigation and routing. It's one of my uh, favorite subjects because it is how you actually structure your app. But today I want to talk about exactly the basics of routing and navigation. So how do you set up a routing module in Angular, how to do the routing in React, and then we can compare them both because it is a big difference. Hence why, well, the difference is how you build it and the way you have to think it through. Um, but you can see some patterns are the same. Let's kick it off. Okay. So Angular. You remember, guys, this is very close. Um, to run an Angular app, you're just going to navigate to the folder because this folder is different. And then you're just going to do npm run start. Now, before you ask what's that background noise, that's my little one practicing piano. I think I should start doing a YouTube channel for her. She's f five. She's five and is already doing, um, playing pretty well. Mm. So, I'm going to do some channels with her and I think I'm going to create a channel for her. If you're interested in seeing kids play, kids talents, somewhere link below. Right. Angular app is kicked off and let's kick it off the React app. So terminal, new terminal, npm run start and I'll create the React app. Now, before I kick this off, yeah, that's which is on smart. Uh, I'm just going to check the branch, get branch is less than four. I'm just going to check status. It's up to date. And let's check it out. So, bonissimo. Um, what was it here? Git, hey, status, git branch. Oh, beautiful, git checkout. Oh, shaka, 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 angular, lesson, cinco. Okay, so these both apps are running now. For you to refresh, refresh your mind. Locos host 400. We had, remember, we had a menu item that rendered it through from a previous that we all both were in the head of the footer. Yeah. And then we have a dynamic, con dynamic content goes here and side work, sidebar goes here. For now, it's an idea in an app and the same in React. Yeah. yeah. Nothing to render here because we didn't pass in the menu in the header and just in the footer we pass in the menu. So it's got home about us content us. For React, let's do a quick tweak, 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 tweak. And then let's just go into our layout header and navigation. Remember here, we had a menu. I just can copy the footer menu list, put it into the header. It's gonna be the same for now. Copy this menu and put it into the header. Boom shaka, boom shaka. And that's it. I'm just gonna add this to a commit. So I can show um, it's um, introducing, a, introducing a menu header. Introducing a menu object to header. Beautiful. And just let's push it. That's pushed away. All done. Squeaky chair, remember guys? Yeah, squeaky squeaky chair. Okay, so let's do an angular. So, routing and navigation. So, as we normally do in these lessons, we always look at angular IO. And in the search, we can do routing, router module, router, God forbid, routing. This is the thing I never figured out. Is it this one or this one? Routing. Uh, routing. Uh, -dum -pum 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 -pum. Difficult documentation. A little bit for me, a little bit difficult to find it. I'll talk about so in Angular they have the router module and I think it's called um, boom, boom, boom. yeah it's called the router module now this router module you can define it for root and that's defining the core root and then you have four feature which is the child um, roots and um, so you can lazy load your other modules I haven't spoken about modules yet I'll speak to them soon so remember in Angular, when we first created the app, we had a, it asked if we want to default routing for it. And that is app routing.module.ts. And that was something that we here created, but we commented out. I don't want to go deep into it, but it's a routing module. So it creates a module, which it gets injected into your app module, which is called app routing module. You don't even need to actually do it. You can also directly specify here in imports, but it's just a separate module. So it keeps it, the concern separately. Um, it's just a module, and then there it's defined a stop doing that, and then there it's got defined a router module for root, 
uh, and it's got the route object, which is just an object is uh, specifying some kind of pattern that Angular understands in a sense of which path it should load which component. Now, for now, we've got, if you look at routes, at the path level, you can, you, so when you do an object in routes, so this is uh, a type, which is making sure you've got the right type, you specify the path and the component. For now, by default, we're loading one, and app module, by de well, the module, when initialized by default, loads first component, which is the app component HTML at default. And app default right now we have that is our layout container. Yeah, the app the container. Remember to put the header, the foot, the footer, and the body. I'm trying to repeat it for myself so I can remember as well what I, what I mentioned. Um, but in app components, so the app default here. Now what you do normally is what how we structure it is. So you've got your. This is the thing that I was talking on one of my after show uh, videos is. You have a layout component, and then you've got your containers, and then you've got your DOM components. Three things. App default is a layout container. So what we're going to do is we're going to create here. Now what we're going to do here is instead of app default, we can take out the app default, or for now we're going to comment it out. So if we're going to check on our page for app default, it should load us nothing because it has got no to, nothing to load at the beginning. So there's a thing that I was mentioning at the beginning, and it's called router outlet. I don't know if I mentioned previous videos, but it's the default that gets set up. Router outlet is a component. Oops. It's a component that's part of the app routing module. It knows what to load inside of it. And this is where the path gets, basically, it understands which one to use. Now, I hope I explained very basic uh, and explaining it, how it works so you guys can understand so we have a path, we define a path of, so the, what's a path? A path is anything after the slash. Well, it's a path, it's, the, it's where the user navigates to. So our first one should be, let's say, dashboard that we mentioned here. So dashboard is showing red, and then it's a component that we want to load. So we just take out this, which is the informational. It's a component that we want to load. So as a dashboard page, we would like to create a we can create a dashboard component, which is going to be a container, and it's going to be responsible for loading the dashboard container. Now, if that doesn't make sense, give it a couple of seconds and it will sync in. So what we do first is we generate a NGC. Um, I'll do a, a dot .containers, to specify to be in the containers folder, and I will call it dashboard. Now, oi, I made a mistake there. Instead of ng, you need to write ngc, so because it's g is for generating c's for the component. You generate that, that'll create a component. Um, what does it not like? Ah, it doesn't like because I've not navigated to the folder I'm in. So you navigate to the folder, which is bananas app, and then you write, then you, oh, doesn't want to repeat the command I was doing, ngc to generate the component in the containers folder, please, monsieur. Containers, and you call it dashboard. Right, great. So we have our component that generated, which is a dashboard, and let's have a look. Uh, a little bit lower down, we should have, there you go, attached to it, dashboard component created. So it always adds a component, uh, naming it end, dashboard component. That should be automatically injected or uh, imported into your de declarations, dashboard component here. So you've got it. Now, in the routing module, you can specify, yeah, when it's dashboard, load this component. Don't forget to import it at the top, it's a routing module. That's imported. Now, I just go back to my node, see if that's picking up. What happens if you type in dashboard, it should load dashboard component. Let's have a look. So 4,200, dashboard works. So it loaded the component on that path, which is great. Now, let me just swap these around so it's easier to swipe. We've got dashboard, let's say we've got another one. Let's create, so before creating those paths, we can create those components, um, boom, boom, boom. Let's create another one, ngc, and we can create, let's say it's a user container, we have the user profile. So that's another one created there. Um, let's get that user component cl uh, class name and introduce it into. So don't forget it's an, an array, so here's an object. First thing is a path, so define the path, which is user, and then component. So these can be different. These are can be custom, yeah? This one can be profile, and I'm just gonna do a comma here and import them. 
boom, import it. So what happens if I do slash now user? Ah, because it's not slash user, slash profile. Change the last minute, forgot about it. Slash profile, user load. So we've got these now, different components loading at different time. Um, but you would say, Chris, we've got this um, layout. You know, I want to use reuse the layout component. This is where the thinking comes through. Um, so you've got a layout component that's responsible for the layout, and then you would load the container inside it. Well, here, what we normally do is this is the trick. Let me just minimize this little kid here. I'll minimize the window here, and so you start with a path. You've got a what I normally do is you have a path which is an empty path, and then your component would be actually layouts. Your default layout component, which I'll copy it, put it here, it's loads here, and then what I do okay, it hasn't got the import in, let's import that little thing here. Boom, in, and then children, so children, which is the path afterwards. So when it has the path, anything after it's a child of a child, child, because it's a child of the uh, main. So would you have home, I don't know, product, product name. So that's product name uh, page is a child of product categories page. So these are all child, children. So what I do now is just copy this here and put it into the children. And just have a look at this for a second. So you've got children, path dashboard, path profile. So the default component will load first, which is, if I just go back to the page, it loads this one on the profile page. So what happens is, um, and where's the dashboard? The dashboard profile doesn't get loaded, and I'll show you why, because see default component here. So app component doesn't read anymore, it's through the outlet. And real outlet actually, so in default component, remember we had here app header and then dynamic content goes here and the app sidebar, just put it on the next line, and then app footer. So here we want actually to load the, the containers inside this default co component class. So this is where you swap actually this against the root outlet. Now what's gonna happen is when this kicks in the default component, it's gonna search for the root outlet to load the children inside of it. And then it will actually load inside the, ch the child. Oh, come on, close to correct. It will load inside of it the children of the component. So now, look at that. I've got profile, user works. Now this is the child loaded inside. So you've got the header, the footer, which is dealt by the default component, the layout, the master component, and then the containers get loaded inside here. Beautiful. What happens if I go to dashboard? Dashboard also gets loaded here. So you keep reusing your menu, master template, but the middle part you swap out, and these are the containers. Now you've got nicely um, structured out router module responsible for the switch of which we want. So that's the router module, the router outlet, um, how you structure it, so layout, containers, dumb components. Now I'll go in the next path when I start introducing about modules, is how you lazy load these into separate modules and how the path routing works. This is Semi-medium apps, we're gonna get more complex because we need to split up. I need to build the basics and then we can split up and show you how you split it up into modules. So this is nicely done here. Layouts, I'm just double checking everything, it's nice and sweet. Okay, now these little bit may mix up because you've got the dashboard and the sidebar here inside of containers, which is actually not right. Um, we've got the layouts. I would actually, what we'll do is for now to not confuse, only for this video, but Actually, I would call them features. And I would actually move the dashboard into the feature. Yes, please. And the user into the feature. So, dashboard user moved. So what happens, I'll just check the routing has been all correct. So, containers features. It's actually, those, um, the dashboard and the user should be actually a separate module called dashboard, which has uh, the dashboard containers in it. But for now, just much more easier because components, we've got a navigation as a dumb component and containers, we've got the header footer, um, which should be, normally should be a dumb component, but in this one I created as a container because I actually wanted to speed the state and load the actual dynamic menu into the header and to the footer. I hope that
kind of draws the picture together. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Let's close this up. Git add, git commit, and then introducing, so introducing um, router, router module to the classes and then git push. And that will be lesson five for Angular. Gone into the cloud. Someone's home computer. Okay, React. Totally different world, a little bit similar concept, but a little bit differently how you do it. Let's go into, let me flip these for you. Whoop. Now, what do we have? Just remind my refresh my ideas and my, my uh, what I have, is we do have a default layout here, component, which is responsible and then loading the, you got the header, you got the div in the middle, sidebar and footer, default layout. And now you want to load different components or different, we call it, features, containers, depending on the path, right? So you've got the containers here. For now in React, I also create this folder structure. We can call it features. I'm not used to this kind of naming here, but I'll keep it for now. So what would I have here is, I want to create a feature which is actually be depending on the path, I'll load this feature, and I'll call it the same. So we have a dashboard, JS. Um, it's very difficult to switch, to be honest. Um, I'm just trying to think the way to explain it in React, explain it in Angular. So remember, it's the same as header, you have an import, and you have a class, and you have an export, right? So dashboard. React from React, and then you have a class dashboard ex dashboard extends component, and then and then you have export default dashboard. Okay, and then it's of course you want to do a pass in the function. The method render and it will return you a the return of JSX and it will say oh come on fingers today please dashboard works beautiful what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna copy this here just it's easier user now this is two new components into our um, react app no need to inject no need to, for no need to import them anywhere you define them and now you have to use the dashboard js right dashboard js inside our layout so we've got a layout component here beautiful now we go to default so here we have our default layout and let's just look back we've got the header the footer the body the sidebar now this thing I'm gonna go ahead, I already imported into my package JSON file and that is called React Router DOM. Now you can import, now I've already imported the React Router DOM, which is basically you can import React Router and React Router DOM, but React Router DOM actually wraps up the React Router, so you don't need the React Router which you see on the web normally. React Router DOM is for web apps. Um, use this one, and I'll show you how to implement it. Um, in our app application, now, we, now that you've imported it, if you don't know how to import it, all you do is npm i install um, dash dash save and then do react router dom and that should add it to your dependencies and install it. Um, now, while well, this is here, I'm just delete it. I'm just going to delete it there. So, where we were, so we create our user component, and now what we want to do is in our default component is based on the path, we want to load the specific one. Now, let's import it. So the way I like to import it, and I've seen this a couple of times, so all you do is import, then you do browser, router, beautiful. Oh, we already imported it, so I'll just delete this one. Browser, router, but the way I like it is as, no. You do as, router, route, and link. Three things. And then what I do is normally, is you need to wrap up your router, which is basically, um, for us, it's going to be the body tag. So you wrap it up here. 
So you can see this is the wrapping router and now it expects inside of it to be a route which you can define as route. Now you may think link. Link is actually to do the clicking um, through navigating through paths. I'm not explaining that in Angular. Um, I'm going to back to and explain it. But I think about links, I can do the next session for now just with router and root and uh, link I'll leave it for next one. So how do you navigate? It will be a good part for the, the menu, but for now, route. And what does route do? Route expects a couple of props. One of them is path, which you define is which path it should um, look at. And then at this path, it's very simplified. It, so at this path, um, you, for now, to show you, it can expect a single, there's a method called render, which is, uh, can execute an anonymous, anonymous function and you can state, for example, to return your JSX, which is hello. And that we can close it off like this. I'm just going to close this for it's easier to navigate. So at the route path of a dashboard, I want to render it. I execute a anonymous function and to render hello. I'm just going to save that. And at dashboard, I should see hello. What did I just do wrong? Hmm. Ah, see what I mean. So the path you have to specify here, slash dashboard, and that of course is going to load it. There you go, renders it. So there's another thing about these routes. So you can have a precise prop, which is called exact, to make sure that you specify exactly at this path to render this. So just double check that as well. It renders my hello here, as you see. And it's specifically at this URL. So I can even do it slash. So load. At slash it loads. So what I want to do now, this is the render rendering at this path. So instead of using the, um, the method render, I want to pass another prop which it uses called component. In component, this is what I'm specifying before, is you can actually specify, so let's import that little thing, a module which is called dashboard from dashboard. And now we can specify it here, the dashboard here, Oops, I'm putting in the strings. Put in the strings, remove that, that save it. So now, if I just go back at the slash and add a dashboard here to make it more interesting, and load dashboard, dashboard gets loaded. The same thing we can add in root, route precisely. We can have profile, and we can load the user user component which is was it user 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 capital u and we load here so if i do slash profile say ooh <laughs> save it no what am i doing i can control this by accident fingers profile dashboard works Ah, in the user feature, we just need to change the wording here. Go user works. And that should load user works here. And on dashboard, it should load the dashboard works. Great, right? Well, I'm going to add actually a link as well so we can see, we can click through the menu items. So, next thing I think I'm going to add it to the video, which will be nice, is just for now, we're going to put it here in a default one is link and link. And expect to have a property pass links here and we can say slash dashboard dashboard copy it here dashboard menu item and then this should take us to dashboard so if we go to profile and if we inspect the element quickly we would see it generates automatically a, a link ref, so the link component, and if I click on it, it takes it to the dashboard, it loads the dashboard. Now, for our interest, we can just quickly load it, the profile, 
So I've linked, close that here. Oops, nice to have something named for. I just give it a break. So I got dashboard and profile. I click on profile, it loads profile. You can see the changing. So that's, and everything's wrapped up in the router, yeah? Hence, what you see in React, this is how you basically, this is how the routing works in React. In Angular, the routing module, I think you should add it as well, it's be good for the videos. We've got a little thing that I missed out here, and that is the routing, the path. So in the layout, for now the same default component instead of the header use. So I'm going to specify here below the header, and just out of interest, we can have a link, which you have to do in normal Angular. Instead of the half, we would have a path, a router link, and then you specify the naming of it, and then you specify here the, the, the name of the menu item. I'm just going to copy that, paste it in, and then let's say here you have profile. And here, we, so here, we're just going to specify in, we're going to have uh, profile, no, dashboard like this. And just copy this, paste it here. Easier, quick, let do this. Profile, and just double check in router module, did we call it profile? Yes, we did. Profile, go back to default HTML. Dashboard profile, let's see if it loads. Um, dashboard profiles together, let's give it a space. The starting root of the domain, if I just gonna close this now, refresh it, that should work. Dashboard, profile, now it flips. So you can see at the bottom of the URL that dashboard is currently pointing now. So that's how you add router links into Angular. Let's add that to our commit. Quickly, git add, git commit, introducing links. Beautiful, and for the React as well, community, Just double check where I am. Beautiful. Git add. Git commit. Introducing routing in React JS. Git push. Three, two, one. There you go. React five lesson. And React at Angular lesson five. That's basically it guys, you today have seen, sorry if there's a little bit of background noise, but I think you've seen how you do routing in Angular, how you do routing in React. The difference is that in Angular you more go through the module where you specify the path and it knows then on which component it should load and which path. In React you pass in the props and you have the props of path and component, whereas in, in, the, in the path component you specify the path and in the component you specify the component. Or you can use a renderer, which is called an anonymous function, and render some kind of JSX where you want to load. That's basically it. I'll cut it here. I'll make it short. And thank you, guys. Guys, again, don't forget to subscribe to the videos. Thank you for all supporting the community. I'm still trying to get those 100 users. If you're not subscribed and you're new to here and you like these videos, please take a little moment, subscribe to the video, thumbs up to the video, some comments. I appreciate everything. For now guys, this is Chris, your JavaScript buddy. Thank you for the support and I'll see you next one. Ta-da. Right, back to more coding. Hmm. Need to add a little bit here. Oh, see ya.